sorry. Hey, it's wonderful to see you again, Dan and uh, Flint. Um, That's I, wonderful. Yeah, I, I was going to uh, ask a question, but I want to bring this up. Since you mentioned Casey Kasem, uh, a few years ago at BotCon, uh, some friends of mine uh, did a little thing with uh, Casey's characters, Cliff Jumper, uh, where uh, some years ago, Casey Kasem was caught on the air uh, cursing and swearing mm -hmm. because uh, someone had played a record that was up-tempo yeah. and he was supposed to talk about someone whose dog had just died. So they did the scene where Cliff Jumper tries to shoot Megatron in the first episode and Hound says, you know, Cliff Jumper, what are you doing? And you hear Cliff Jumper saying, ponderous, man, ponderous. I don't know what the hell is wrong with these people. They do this to me all the time. Oh, and then when they run away from Laserbeak, uh, Hound says, Now you've done it! And Cliff Jumper goes, Oh, go eat yourself! <laughs> um, but coming down from that, though, my question for both of you was... Oh, if anybody, okay, oh, sorry. If anybody had ever recorded the read-throughs, okay, oh, we do read-throughs read -throughs yeah. before this cup. Okay, you have incredibly salty night, night club, uh, you know... Uh, you know, performers. Yeah. Up there. I remember what the read throughs oh, yeah. sounded like. I mean, oh, yeah. they, this was beyond X rated. Matter of fact, they would have had to come up with another new rating. Yeah, I mean, beyond but, X. Because I mean, a lot of these voice, this isn't true of Dan, but a lot of these voice actors are the raunchiest people in the known universe. <laughs> and, and so they just read this. <laughs> Thanks for leaving me out, man. And then they read the script. You know, I can only imagine what a Scooby session must have been. Uh, you know, <laughs> a lot of bestiality humor and stuff like yeah. that. I mean, yeah. 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 Well, you know Scooby and Velma, that whole thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I can only, yeah. It wasn't good. I can only imagine yeah, that. It wasn't so. good. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, so yeah, you would hear the X-rated version of the script, because they're just reading through it and having fun. But, but they're ad-libbing, and they're throwing stuff in there, and you know, when you have some passage, because what's great about the actors is, you know, I, like when I'm writing the script or editing it even, I'm moving, they're playing this chess game where I'm moving all the characters around against a plot, and you know, you go back and you do a dialogue pass and all that, but the actors are the people that are invested, in, understand that character and have internalized that character. And they only see this show from the point of view of that character. So their line is probably in execution. It's definitely because it's got to come out of their voice better than my line. And that was the other you know, group I was extremely unpopular because I'd listen to these things. And between the, you know, after just the you know, raw pornography and all that and the voices, <laughs> there was great material. And some shows got, you know, were more and more, by the time we got to Inhuman, Inhumanoids, we were recording Ensemble, which people didn't, meaning all the actors would just read the script, because normally what they wanted to do when we started out, everybody would try to get a discreet take on every line. And if you're a sound engineer, that's a really great thing. Does mm -hmm. this make any sense? But if you're, but you lose something in my If you're opinion, an actor, you, it's, it's you, death. You don't have the performance, you're not playing off. There's no that. flow, obviously. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and so, and so, and, and I liked, I, I wanted the good performance. I didn't care if we were pee, were pee. I never even knew what a pee pop was anyway. You know, I'd hear it's, a pee pop there and it just made me do it. It's one of those. Yeah, but, but I never heard it. <laughs> you know, and that's why so much of this stuff, you know, I mean, it, once again, I was not the most competent producer that was ever in a room, but you know, it, uh, one of the more enthusiastic. Um, you know, and I didn't care about pee pops. What I cared about was seeing you guys. I mean, when you guys were actually playing off each other, it turboed. You know, the yeah. the entire thing, and that's why our shows sounded different than anybody else's. But it was very, very hard to get people to do that. You know, I mean, it's like showing up and you're in a Stanley Kubrick movie, but you're Robert Altman. You know, it it, it was. It was not the way they were used to work. Well, what I remember is we used to we used to, if there was a scene. There's a lot of battle stuff, obviously. Yeah. So there's a lot of of. of you know, <laughs> Very good. You all, you've been wanting to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like this really yeah. repressed. Design. Um, but there are there were a few scenes actually that went on between characters, and those were what those were what I lived for, you yeah. know, and the actors lived for to be able to play those. So you know, usually Wally would let us play that out, and it might have been just like fifteen or twenty seconds worth of dialogue, but at least you got to, you got a little bit of a flow. Then he would destroy it by going back and doing each line discreetly. Yep. And I don't know what takes they ended up using, but always for me, the takes that we were able to, to play off one another were the best. Yes. But Wally, had, Wally heard these lines in his head a certain way. Lynn, you know this. Yep. And if he didn't get that line just the way he heard it in his head, you were not, we were not moving on. And I saw him reduce actors to piles of molten jello <laughs> over a period of time with take after take. Nope, I want it. No, it's, I want more. And the actor would go, I want more. 
no, no, it's, I want more. And I'm like, it's the same thing, Wally. He's doing exactly what you want. Let him alone. And Well, usually, yeah, usually what I do is I just try to reiterate the line. I mean, not every line comes out of every actor's mouth the way you want it to. Yeah. Right? You so know, you, I mean, there's something sitting in my head. Half the time, the line, the guy that was saying it was better than what I had in my head. You know, I mean, you know, and... And then there was the fight going on when you saw the people leaning in there. So yeah, they when, yeah, they'd they get together saying, talking. and They're going to flush the stand. Yeah, back. exactly. Gildersand's we got to go. He's yeah, we were not saying flush Dan. <laughs> what, 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 I was fighting with the producer who didn't want to change dialogue and storyboard. You know, because they didn't want to photocopy more script. I, I never knew the reason. You know, my attitude is we're rewriting the script. I mean, you know, look at this. We've got real actors doing it. He's got a better line than we have. Mm. And all we care about is the show. And that would be, that was... That was a long-running battle that was really ugly dirt when I was on G.I. Joe and, and got better by the time I got to Transform. Wally was just used to it, yeah. and they just got producers that were willing to deal with it. And don't get me wrong, Wally was a great director. He produced some great product, obviously. It's, you know, it's, no, but it's he still did great, line reads. He was very, very specific about what he wanted to hear. 